Welcome back to Business Week on Arise News. So it was Herbert Hoover, the 31st president of the U.S., that once said economic depression cannot be cured by legislative action or executive pronouncement. Well, the Nigeria Economic Summit Group this past week in Nigerian capital Abuja during the 29th Nigeria Economic Summit launched the Ernest Shoneko Center for Legislative Reform and Economic Development. A clear signal that, at least for developing countries like Nigeria, legislative reform and economic development are inextricably linked. A certain level of regulation is needed for the economy to grow as it reduces uncertainty because, well, incomplete laws or poor lawmaking can be understood as incomplete social contracts. But the launch of the center was not the only highlight. Important statements by Nigeria's President Bola Ahmed Tinubu, the finance minister Wale Edu, and central bank governor Yemi Kadosa made media headlines. The one that got all of us talking was Finance Minister Wale Edun's statement that Nigeria was expecting $10 billion in inflows to boost liquidity and stabilize the Naira in weeks, as well as executive pronouncements to ease liquidity constraints. But macroeconomics weren't the only focus of the session. In a session on manufacturing for prosperity, aimed at addressing more fundamental issues like productivity and creating a diversified export base, Nigeria's economic challenges were said to be many, but it's fair to say the solutions are just as numerous. Well, with me today to give some level of clear-headedness to all these issues is Amaka Anku, Director and Africa Practice Head at Eurasia Group, joining us from the Abuja Studios. And here in Lagos is Tilewa Adebajo, Economist and CEO of the CFG Advisory. Welcome to the show, both of you. Great to have you on. Great to have you on, Mr. Tilo. I believe this is your first time on Business Week. Yes, yeah. good morning. Good morning. So I'll start with you, Mr. Adibajo. What for you were the main highlights from the Economic Summit Group? Well, I think the key highlights for me was the fact that we have reached a point of realization. Okay. Um, after several false starts, I think uh, it was good to see the key players uh, in the economy sitting down to discuss the pertinent issues at hand and how to resolve those issues and you know what solutions they might have to the problems uh, that Nigeria is facing, which is quite significant. Um, apart from the fact that we have an unsustainable debt level, stagflation and uh, runaway inflation especially is eating to the core values mm. of, of our economy uh, because real rates and um, and real yields are negative. Yes, absolutely. Uh, so the key takeaway for me was the fact that I think the president said they had made mistakes and now they wanted to engage the private sector to be able to work together to find solutions. Uh, then the other takeaway for me was the fact that I saw the three players in the economy, the Minister of Finance, uh, the Budget and Planning and the Central Bank Governor, all in one room, mm. uh, talking in unison, singing from the same hymn sheet, and, you know, I think that's very important because the burden of responsibility on this, uh, the central bank governor and the two ministers uh, to um, restart the economy is very important. Mm -hmm. Also, I think what was said was the fact that they felt that they had stopped the subsidy payments, mm -hmm. uh, which they felt they had bottomed out, and they had stopped the ways and means financing. Mm -hmm. Because, as you know, this administration has actually drawn down about $4 trillion uh, on the ways and means Absolutely. financing. Uh, and I think the central bank assured, the governor assured that that has stopped and also that the subsidy has stopped. So uh, what they told us now was that it's now time to rebuild. Mm. So that's the key takeaway for me from there. Fantastic. So the proof of the pudding. Will be in the eating. In the eating. So yeah. we now await the implementation. <clears throat> Very good point. And I love the fact that you mentioned the ways and means because it kind of ties back to what I said about legislative reforms and economic development and, mm. and the, the level of co policy coherence that's needed between all these stakeholders and key players. So Amaka, you had Mr. Adebajo's take there on the key highlights. You and I attended a session on manufacturing for prosperity and the talk was all about productivity and growth which sometimes you know those issues can often be missed in the big headline making things like the fx liquidity challenges and inflation what was your view on what nigeria can do to really boost domestic productivity and build a strong manufacturing base and investment and industrial policy yeah rola k thanks for having me um I think that session that you and I attended was extremely important because we often forget in the sort of short-term crises of our 
dollar shortages that the problem, the, the reason we, are, we, have, we have dollar shortages is because we don't export, is export much as a country, right? We only have primarily oil exports. And so in the session that I was moderating on my table, our, the question that we had was, what should Nigeria's industrial policy be? Um, we agreed on several things that we've heard several times, right? You know, we want to do more technologies, battery, battery technologies, gas value chains, creative industries, agri-processing for exports. None of these are new ideas, right? We've had previous industrial plans. The problem is that industrial strategy requires a strong civil service, mm. a lot of money to invest in education and infrastructure, and a lot of focus and consistency. And so the agreement at my table was that what's been missing for Nigeria has been vision and hope and very high level engagement all the way from the top to drive collaboration and carry people along towards actually making difficult but in critical investments in productivity. Right. Yeah. Um, and especially the focus and consistency part, which requires legislation, to your point. Mm. Yeah, very, very insightful there, uh, Amaka. And, you know, you, you talk about policy consistency and legislation. Mr. Debajo, you know, as I'd said, we, we seem to sometimes get carried away with the big headline events. And I personally would have loved to have heard a lot more on productivity, that was in that export base, the structural issues rather than what I sometimes perceive as this short-termism. How can we plug the leakages now and deal with the issues now? Whereas what is actually really affecting us is the long-term challenges. But having said that, you know, the one we all want to understand how it's going to happen is this $10 billion of inflows. Well, what do you make of that? Well, first of all, I think we shouldn't get carried away with this $10 billion line of sight, as I say, to $10 billion, <clears throat> because that at best is a temporary solution. Right. The backlog for, the for, for, for FX is between 7 to $8 billion. So even if you use all that to clear the backlog today, how are you going to supply the market going forward? Yeah. So that amount of money should more or less be like a stabilization fund, uh, whereby you use it to intervene gradually over a period of time to reduce while you get your act together. Mm. But going back to the point you mentioned about productivity, mm. Um, I think for me, that is the most significant focus in this economy today. Right. Because the reason why we're where we are is a lack of productivity. And the only way out of any problem we have in Nigeria is to consistently grow this economy between 8 to 10 percent per annum over the next two to three years. Yeah. Uh, if you do that, you resolve unemployment, <clears throat> you resolve the issue of poverty, um, the economy goes back into, you reflect the inflation, uh, the economy, you get rid of stagflation. Mm. So um, the path to growth uh, is without a doubt comes from that productivity. And I think for me, as you've said, that is now something we should put in the fore burner. Mm. But because the 10 billion line of sight is about firefighting. And it's only a line of sight. Yes, and it's only a line <laughs> of sight. So yeah. we really need to focus mm. on the core issues. Uh, and they're saying that because right now we're still firefighting. We need to go away from this firefighting mode. Uh, settle down and put the economy on a path to uh, recovery, yeah. which is through productivity. <clears throat> yeah, so let's, let's peel back the layers of this productivity. What are some of the silver bullets within that space that you think should be a focal point, at least for the rest of the year? Well, I think for me, it's about policy. Right. Um, unfortunately, the Minister for Industry, Trade and Investment was not mm -hmm. at she wasn't. She was represented she by was the China. NIPCC CEO. Yes, so yes. I think maybe she was in China. But I think at this level, that is where the responsibility for productivity lies. Mm. Uh, because you see, you cannot do monetary and trade policy in isolation. So both the fiscal policy, the monetary policy and the trade policy need to work together. Mm. So apart from the CBN governor, the finance minister and the minister of budget and planning, you need to include the Minister of Industry, Trade and Investment in the discussion to be able to put industrial and trade policy mm. back on the burner. Yeah. Because once you do that and you encourage industrial production and local manufacturing, then we can begin to address the issues of foreign exchange. Mm. So we need to review our industrial policy yeah. and to begin to put back incentives for manufacturers because a lot of them are suffering from high costs. 
Absolutely. especially with energy prices. And we need to get some relief in other areas, maybe some tax deductibility or some tax breaks to be able to give them the necessary incentives for them to continue in business. Mm. But without a doubt, I think that is the most significant aspect of, yeah. of what we need to do, getting mm. our economy going forward. And, and in fact, Nigeria's industrial policy, the last time we had an industrial policy was 2012. So clearly time for some updating because that's more than a decade away. So Amaka, I wanted to ask you a bit because the, the CEO for the Nigerian Investment Promotion Commission, uh, Ms. Aisha Rimi, who was representing the Minister for Trade, uh, Dr. Doris Anete, did talk about industrialization policy. And we've seen that, you know, industrialization and manufacturing actually have been one of the most sound development models around the world. The Asian economic miracle was one of those. How do you think the government should approach industrialization? Prioritize technology, uh, prioritize, you know, mechanization of agriculture, the value chain, which one of these subsets of initiatives do you think will be the strong pillar for really driving industrialization in Nigeria? Hmm. To be fair, all of the above, but I think it is, it makes sense to start with agriculture. It employs the most people in Nigeria. Um, and it's the one thing that everybody, you know, we have to eat. Um, and so I would say that we should pick, you know, a couple of these things, agriculture, gas, that's something that we already have, we know how to deal with, build our value chains around it. Of course, we already have the creative industries. We need to do more technology. Um, and to Mr. Adebajo's point, I would say it's really important that the leadership comes from the top. Right. I think the president has done a good job so far of, you know, talking about investments and making this a priority, leading a team to India. We want to see more of that. But I think he needs to do more to talk to the Nigerian people directly about what it means to industrialize and what it's going to take for all of us to do that. Right. He needs to be talking more to the Nigerian people because, like we, we agreed at my table, What's been missing is a very clear vision of where we want to go, what we want to look like, and how to get there. Mm. And, and you need to, vision means you have to bring, people need to see themselves in that, right? In that Nigeria that we want to build in 20 years that is more productive, yeah. right? And so that, if you, if you can build a, a vision and drive hope, people will invest even domestically. Yeah, right? absolutely. So, you know, um, I need to also ask you, Amaka, you know, you provide risk advisory services to mostly foreign investors who want to invest in Africa and specifically Nigeria. How are they reading some of the early policy actions and some of the statements that have come out recently from the government around its plans to boost liquidity and to kickstart the economy? What's their take? What are they saying? So a lot of my clients, and I think other investors, were pretty excited when the administration first came to power and removed petrol subsidies and liberalized the exchange rates. These are things that investors have wanted to see Nigeria do for a while. Obviously, these short-term liquidity challenges have proven to be, I would say, an obstacle and even though we, we understand that we need to think about the long term, the long term issues of why we have dollar short shortages in the first place, it's very hard to get beyond that in the short term if you're looking mm -hmm. for investments, right? Because yeah. investors need to know that they can get their money out. And so unfortunately, we have to solve this short term problem. Um, and I think, you know, to your, to your question about the, the 10 billion line of sites, what's the reaction to it? I think people are curious, right, um, mm -hmm. to see what that means, what, what's that going to look like. Personally, I'm looking for not just a short-term solution. Yes, we need short-term liquidity. I'm empathetic that this is a difficult situation given the structural issues of Nigeria's economy. But I, I want to see the economic team have a clever medium-term plan. Right? It's one thing to have a short-term plan to inject liquidity, but I'm concerned that if we don't have a clearer medium-term plan over the next one, two years, particularly around how are we making sure that we're accreting dollars from our oil exports, um, cleaning up the NMPC, making it more transparent, 
if we don't do all of that, then we're gonna, we could very well be right back here in a year, even if we solve the short-term issues. Absolutely, right? yeah. And Great so I just point. think there needs to be clearer communication about the medium-term plan. And I also really hope that the economic team is putting everything on the table, right? Yeah. Like we shouldn't be ruling out certain options because we have preconceived notions about what those options could mean politically. I think we should put everything on the table and be very, very, very thoughtful mm, yeah. about what we do. Thank next. you very much for that, Amaka. Mr. Adebaje, I'm going to give you the last one. It's interesting that... Amaka mentioned putting all the options on the table. Sometimes I think there are trade-offs and tough decisions that need to be made. On the one hand, you want to control inflation, uh, manage liquidity, but in this case, you want to inject liquidity because we have an FX challenge, but you also want to boost productivity and ensure that you kickstart employment. How is the government going to navigate this going forward, right? Because we often see the monetary fiscal policy issues at odds raise taxes, but we want to boost revenue. We want to collect more taxes from the private sector, but we want more productivity. How are we going to balance and manage this? Okay. Well, as you said, there are trade-offs. Um, mm. When you have gone through, when you have breached all your financial circuit breakers, mm. i.e. the Fiscal Responsibility Act, uh, the Ways and Means, Section 38 of CBN Act has been breached, mm. and you have put yourself in this quagmire, uh, and you're also in stagflation. The only way out is very difficult. And stagflation, for the benefit of our audience, is being high inflation, high unemployment. And low growth. And low growth, yes. yes. Yeah. So in order to reverse that situation, you need to control inflation first. Mm. And to control inflation, you're going to you have to increase your interest rates. So it's going to be a painful process. Mm. Uh, there's, there are no easy fixes. There are no quick wins. Uh, so even though you have a line of sight to $10 billion, it's not a sprint. It's a marathon. Absolutely. So you have to understand that we need to prepare for a marathon where you can have consistent policies over the next 18 months mm. for you to begin to see some meaningful results. We've seen what the United States have done in the last one year, how they've reduced inflation by 50%. And now they're getting the benefits of unemployment and things are beginning to look up. Mm. But yet their interest rates had to go up. So we need consistency in policy over the next one year. We're looking forward to this budget, and now we've seen the medium-term economic framework mm. in support of the budget and the fiscal strategy. Uh, so when we see the budget for next year, I think we'll be in a better position. But as I've always said, told a lot of people, we need to understand that it's going to be a very painful process, and it's not going to be easy. So it's going to get worse before it gets better. Yeah. It's a sprint. It's not a sprint. It's a marathon. It's a marathon. So, so give us one thing that you're most optimistic about. What I'm most optimistic about is that the potential of the Nigerian economy. Yeah. Nigeria, as we speak today, is a trillion dollar, trillion dollar economy. The problem with Nigeria has been the people who have been managing our economy. If we hadn't lost two to three hundred billion of our GDP in the last eight years, Nigeria's GDP would be close to eight hundred and fifty billion dollars, mm. which is only maybe a 50, one fifty billion shy of a trillion. Absolutely. So I have, put, I have very, very fake good faith in the potential of Nigeria's yes. economy. Mm, yeah, and Amaka, I would ask you the same question very quickly. The one bright spot that you think will, will keep you optimistic and your investors optimistic about Nigeria, very briefly. Uh, yeah, I think it's fundamentally a growth economy. And I would say I'm very happy that we're finally talking and focusing about the need to raise revenue. Right. It's something I've been talking about for a while, and this ad ad administration seems to understand how important that is. So that makes me happy. Yeah, thank you very much. Great to have Mr. Tilewa Adebajo, CEO of CFG Advisory, and Amaka Anku, my longtime analyst of Africa practice at the Eurasia Group. Thanks so much for joining us. Um, well, that's it, ladies and gentlemen, for Business Week this week. We can continue the conversation on X. Have a lovely weekend ahead. I'm Rolake Akinkube Filani.